listen, we're gonna be creating something crazy today. You know, something that's gonna be awesome, something that is quite unique and visually appealing. So we're gonna be creating an RGB liquid melt title, and this also works with your logo. A lot of keywords there, liquid, melt, RGB. A lot of cool effects that are gonna go into this, but the best thing about this tutorial, it's very easy to do this. It's not complicated, and it's gonna be fun to do. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hope everyone is doing awesome today. Before we get into the tutorial, I wanna give a shout out to VideoHive. They're currently having a huge sale on some amazing templates for After Effects with items starting with 30% off. So if you wanna use a handful of templates that I use, I will link some of my favorite templates in the description from VideoHive that are currently on sale if you wanna pick up anything during this time. So the links will be below. And without wasting more time, let's jump into our tutorial and let's get started. And as always, you can download our project files for free off our website if you wanna follow along with our tutorial. So we'll come over here to our tutorial composition and all we have in here is a title. You can also use a logo, uh, but this is a non-destructive workflow. So you should be able to swap out a logo or change your title later in the future. So once you have your title in here, what we can do is go to layer pre-compose and we'll call this title placeholder. All right, awesome. This way, then we can re-edit the title later in time. All right, so first, what we need to do is be able to stretch out this title. So what we're gonna do is go up to Effect, Transition, and we're gonna grab CC Scale Wipe. And we'll set our stretch up to about 95. And we'll come here to the direction, and you can set this to any direction you want. So we'll do 180 degrees, and also have it go straight down. Then we need to update the center. So we'll grab the Y value of the center, and we can just bring down the anchor point to where just the bottom of the title or logo is being stretched to the bottom like that. All right, awesome. So you could have it just go and stretch down like this, but in our main demo comp, we have uh, it being stretched from top to bottom. So if you wanna do the top as well, all you have to do is take the effect and go up to edit, duplicate, and then just change the direction to zero degrees and just update the Y value to only stretch the top of the title or logo. This way, you know, it's completely up to you if you just wanna do the bottom or just the top. That's completely up to you. So now that we have our stretch in place, what we can do is take our uh, title or placeholder here and go up to uh, layer pre-compose and we'll move all attributes into new composition and we'll call it title stretch. All right, so we're gonna start off by creating this very warped perspective of our stretch title and getting that set up for success right now. So we'll grab our composition and we'll go up to effect distort and we're gonna grab turbulent displace. All right, we're gonna set the displacement to twist. We'll set the amount to 75. We'll set the size down to like 80 and we'll set our anti-aliasing for best quality to high. Then what we can do is add a keyframe for offset and we'll move forward to the end of our animation. Let's say eight seconds and we can move, let's say the X value by a little bit. So then there'll just be a little bit of overall animation to everything here. And how far you go by changing the X value will determine how fast it will animate. Uh, you can also update the Y if you want to. It's completely up to you. Uh, just go ahead and mess with the offset and that will animate through. Now, we don't want to have our main title or logo animating by the turbulent displays. So what we need to do is grab the rectangle tool here at the top and we'll just simply draw out a rectangle mask like this to go across. Like that, that's good. Then we'll open up our effects. We'll open up turbulent displays and under compositing options, we need to hit the plus icon and make sure that's set to mask one. All right, awesome. And you might need to set the mask to subtract. So then it's not gonna affect the actual bulk of the title, it's just gonna affect the lines going outside. And you can always uh, decrease the max expansion if you want too far on that, but you'll have to play with that in a second to maximize it. So we need to be able to blur this out. So the top and bottoms need to be blurred out. So what we're gonna do is go up to layer, new, solid. And we'll just call it map. And we'll go up to Effect, Generate, and we'll grab a Gradient Ramp. What I'm gonna do is grab our top point, which is black, and just kind of bring this down, kind of past the midpoint right there, and that's fine. Then what we're gonna do is take this map layer, we're gonna duplicate it, and we'll set the Blend Mode to Screen. And I'll hit R my keyboard for Rotation, I'll set the Rotation to 180 degrees. So then it'll be going like this, and that's fine. Then what we'll do is take both of these layers that we just created, and we'll go up to Layer, Pre-Compose, and we'll rename it to map, all right? And we'll turn off that layer because we don't need it. So then we'll grab our title stretch layer and then we'll go to effects, blur and sharpen and add uh, camera lens blur. And where it says blur map, set that layer to our new map layer. And then we come here to blur radius and we can increase this to like 50. We might have a little bit of an issue here. So first of all, we need to work on this. So we'll hit F on keyboard for mass feather and feather out that mass. That's the first thing we need to absolutely do. 
And to help perfect this, we can bring down our black values here to kind of help blur this out a little bit better. So kind of like that should be good. We'll go back into our main comp and that should help blur out the edges by a little bit. Now it's still obvious that there's these cuts here. So what we can also do is just hit MM on our keyboard to bring up that max expansion again, and you can bring it down to kind of help fit there. Uh, and you can also decrease the size of the turbulent displace to just help blend that in there as best as you can. The more you increase the blur radius, the better it'll be. And then make sure you check on repeat edge pixels. So for the most part, that looks really good. Um, and it's nice and blurred out for this effect. So then all we have to do is be able to add our RGB effect and we should be good to go. Then let's take our title stretch layer down here and let's pre-compose it. And we'll click on leave all attributes in new composition and then we can call this RGB. All right, so we have all of our original effects back in this. We can go into that composition that we just pre-comped and then we just have you know, our title stretch layer with no effects applied to it. That's great. First, what we need to do here is go up to layer new solid and make sure that layer is black. Click OK. And we'll grab the rectangle tool again and we'll just create this rectangle mask to go across our comp like this and set this to subtract. Then we're going to hit F on keyboard for mask feather and feather this like crazy. All right. You can also hit MM on your keyboard to bring up max expansion and you can move it out by a little bit, but we can check on this in a second. Uh, this is just here so we can add more color to our overall stretch. What we're going to do here is take our title stretch layer and we're going to duplicate it. Bring it above the black solid that we just created. Then we'll go up to effect channel and we're going to grab shift channels. We're going to turn off the green layer and also the blue layer as well. And we'll duplicate this and we'll turn off red. We'll turn on the green and we'll duplicate it again. We'll turn off green and turn the blue back on. Awesome. We'll take the two top layers here. Actually, we'll take uh, all three of the top layers and set it to screen. Awesome. So then all we have to do is hit P and keyboard for position for these layers. We can just offset it a little bit in time to whatever side we want to do, whatever colors we want to create, uh, just using the X value here. And that's cool. Then we can all click the stopwatch and just type in wiggle, open parenthesis, two comma, you know, 10 or I'll do like five. I want to keep it subtle. I don't want anything too crazy. And then I can just copy that expression. And I'll just paste it to like another one, this one right here. And you know, you get a little bit of this nice RGB offset here. The reason why we added this black solid with the mask was so we can add a little bit more color around the edges to our, you know, our title. So it cuts out the white by a little bit. So if we go to our main composition, our colors will be completely updated. You'll see that we'll have some colors around our title and that's fine. But we'll go back to our main composition. We want to add some more colors in here. All we have to do is just offset the positioning of each of these RGB layers uh, just by a little bit more. And this will give us greater color capability back in our main composition. So we've updated the colors and you know, that adds a little bit more color to our comps. Now, I also like to go to layer new uh, adjustment layer and go to effect color correction curve. And we come here to say to like the red channel, we can bring this down or up, create like maybe a little S curve, come here to the green channel, we can just bring this down and this adds a tremendous amount of color uh, to our composition. And then we'll go to say our main RGB curve here and we can just bring this down by darkening it, create like a slight S curve. And overall that just changes the entire dynamic of the title and that's cool. Then we can also go to effect noise and grain and just add noise. And we'll set the noise up to like say 15%, uncheck use color noise and that will help the entire composition, all the blurriness uh, going on here, add a little bit more authentic grain to this. Now, if you wanna go and animate the title, we can just track back all the way to our first composition where we have our title. All right, and then we'll come here to animate and we'll add an opacity. We'll set the opacity down to 0%. We'll open up the advanced tab and we'll set this to randomize order. Then we we'll increase the start percent and you see where we're going here. So we can like set this to like, you know, they only have one word, you know, hidden. We can all click the stopwatch to random seed and type in time asterisk 10. So then our title will be flickering randomly. And that's nice. So back in our main composition, that will update to reflect that animation. So we can have our entire RGB melt going on with that animation. And one last tip, if you want to keep the RGB effect off of the title, go into the layer where you, we did all the RGB stuff, grab the rectangle tool of one of your uh, RGB layers and just create a mask around it and then just subtract that mask. Make sure you uh, hit F and keyboard for mask feather, feather it, copy the mask and paste it to the other two layers. And then that will automatically update your main composition not to have that RGB effect on your main title. So, you know, keeps the effect separate from the actual uh, liquid melt that we've created. So that's how we can create this really unique, crazy title. A lot of options to work with here to kind of customize with what you want to do. Hope you found this tutorial helpful and now you have a new crazy idea in your toolkit of tricks. 
So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are below and always be creating.